Okay, let's get started on 10.5. Um, in 10.5, we have one uh, thing happening, one event happening, and then another thing happening, as opposed to 10.4, where just one thing was happening um, that might have had a few things true about it. Like, uh, you pulled a card, and the card was a king and a, a spade. But here, we're going to look at drawing a king, then drawing a spade, something like that. Um, so to start with, we know the probability of each event, and in the first case, they're independent. Okay. Independent. Well, that means that one thing can't affect the other. All right. We'll get this, We'll see the uh, a specific example in just a second. Um, but you know, if you flip a coin, the next time you flip a coin, the first coin flip it doesn't affect the second coin flip. But if you pick a card out of a deck of cards and don't put it back, then you know that affects how many cards are left and, and affects the probability of the next card that's being drawn. Um, but in an independent event, that would be like a, the flipping a coin. You pick that coin up and flip it again. The first coin flip doesn't affect the second. A die roll. Um, or if you draw something like a card with replacement, like you return everything to the condition it was when you started. Uh, if you draw a card and put it back, or you draw a marble and you put it back, or uh, you pick a person and you put them back, uh, if you keep replacing whatever it is you drew out in the first place, uh, then the events are independent. Uh, whether or not it rains uh, each day uh, is independent. Uh, so independent just means that one event does not affect the other. Okay, in this case, we're given some arbitrary probabilities. We're told that they're independent, uh, which means that we multiply them together. Okay, now let's see why that is. All right, let's try and visualize this. Okay, we want B to happen, but B is only going to happen after A happens. So A happens first. Well, A is 75% likely to happen. Okay, so here's 100%. And here, this is 100%, or 1 if we're talking in decimal. In percent, it's 100%, and here, this little bit here is 75%. Okay, so the first thing that has to happen is A has to happen. Okay, so like any time that A doesn't happen, this 25% of the time, we do not move on and try to do the B thing. right? So the, the only time we go on and do B is once A already happens. So we're only going to try and go on and do B only after uh, A happens. Or in other words, the only time we go on to do B is 75% of the time. Right? So only 75% of the time do we go on and try to do B, whatever B is. Right? So now when we go on to do B, it's like this right here is the only space that B ever is attempted. Right? So this is like the 100% of the time that we even try and do B. Right? Uh, this time we're not even going to try and do B after A doesn't happen. Okay, so we're only going to try 75% of the time to go on and do B. So already we are cut down to 75% of the 100%. Okay? Now when we go on to try B, how likely is it that B will happen? Well, it's only 30% likely that it will happen. Okay, so it's only this likely that it will happen. 30% of the number of times that we try it, we only try it 75% of the time, right? So what percentage is this of the, of the total 100%? Well, it's, it's 30%, right? It's 30% of the 75% of the time that we even attempt it. Only 75% of the time do we go on and attempt to be, and only 30% of that time will that happen. So what's 30% of 75%? Well, we find that the same way we find 30% of anything, right? If I want to know 30% of $1,000, I multiply 1,000 by 0.3. If I want to know 30% of 75%, I take 0.75, and I multiply it by 0 0.3. 0.75 times 0 0.3, 0 0.225. Okay, so it's 22.5% uh, likely that uh, A will happen and then B will happen. Um, 
if we go the other way, it'll be the same thing. If we try B and then A, it'll still be the same uh, amount, likely. Because then we'll instead um, only try 30% of the time. Right? Uh, so that's like around that much. 30% of the time. That's, that's how often we'll go on. And so we'll try B first, right? So that's B. And then we'll go on and try A. Well, look at that. That looks like about right there, 75% of that 30%. So um, that's 30% of the entire 100%. So whether we do A and then B or then B and then A, uh, if they're independent, it doesn't matter. All right, next. Um, so we're going to spin this wheel. We want to get a, a blue, right, one of those. And then we want to get green one of those okay so like I said in the the previous uh, question this is an example of an independent event if we spin this wheel and get a blue then that does not increase or decrease the likelihood that we'll uh, get a green next okay because the it doesn't change the number of greens that are possible and it doesn't change the number of total colors that are possible uh, so it doesn't change the probability of the next thing happening. We can spin it a thousand times and every time the probability will be the same for you know whatever color we're talking about. So what is the probability that it's blue? Well, you can see there's three blues and there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, right? That's a fourth of it. So there's 16 colors altogether. It looks like a, yeah, it's definitely a fourth of the wheel is four, so 16. So there's one, two, three blues out of 16, okay, and they're independent, so 3 sixteenths of the time we will uh, continue and spin a second time. Right? That means that uh, 13 out of 16 times we are not going to try, on it, tr try to go on and get a green, right? So it's very unlikely that we'll, it's quite unlikely that we'll go on and even try to get a green, right? So we are here and only uh, maybe about this much about three sixteenths of the time will we even go on and try to get a green and how often out of that little piece of the time will we get a green well we will only get a green uh, four sixteenths of the times that we try to get green and we're only going to try to get green three sixteenths of the time so it's four sixteenths or a quarter of that amount of time. So what is this tiny, tiny piece? Well, that is 4 sixteenths of 3 sixteenths. How do we find 4 sixteenths of 3 sixteenths? Well, we just multiply the two together. We multiply 3 sixteenths by 4 sixteenths. Um, let's see, 4 and 16, that's a 4 and a 1. Uh, nothing else is going to simplify here. We're going to get 3 out of 64. That's how likely it is that we'll get a uh, a a, what a blue and then go on and try and get a green and then actually get that green so we'll try 3 16 of the time to get a green and then 4 16 of that 3 16 of the time we'll actually get a green on our second spin so uh, total 3 64 of the time we will get a blue and then a green okay let's try and get three in a row uh, so first we're going to try and get a blue uh, hold on uh, this blue try and get a blue this represents all the colors that are that are possible. We're going to try and get a blue. That's 3 sixteenths of the time. So that is going to be a little less than a fourth of the time. So we're going to try to get a blue. So let's say we get a blue. That's going to happen 3 sixteenths of the time. Then we're going to try and get a red after that, after we get a blue, which is only 3 sixteenths of the time. And then we're going to go on and try and get that, uh, that red, which is uh, the likelihood of 5 sixteenths. Okay. So we go on and try to get that red, that's going to happen out of that 3 sixteenths. It's going to happen 5 sixteenths of the time, so a little bit more than a quarter of that time. Right, so then we try and get a, a red after we get a blue. After that, we're going to try and get a green. Okay, and we're only going to try it for that third, that third spin to get a green, we're only going to try that after we've already gotten a blue, which will happen 3 sixteenths of the time, uh, and then a red, which is going to happen uh, 
5 sixteenths of 3 sixteenths of the time, and then we're going to try and get a green. A green's going to happen 4 sixteenths of the time. That's way down here. That's barely, barely even visible. This tiny little guy right here. Right? So this little sliver right, of, of this whole big thing is how often we're going to get a blue, then a red, and then a green. It's going to be uh, 5 sixteenths of 3 sixteenths of the time. We're going to get a red after we get a blue. And then just 4 sixteenths of 5 sixteenths of 3 sixteenths of the time, we're going to get a green on that third spin. So it all comes out to be... Uh, let's see, so these are going to cancel. It's going to be a 4, that's going to be a 1. Um, nothing else is going to cancel. So we're going to get 15 out of... Uh, I'm not going to try and do that in my head for you. So 16 times 16 times 4, 1,024. So 15 1,024 of the time we're going to uh, get a combination of a blue, then a red, then a green. So very unlikely um, that that'll happen. So we'll be spending a lot of times before we ever um, get that specific sequence of three colors. Okay, so now we get into conditional probabilities, which are not independent. We can call them dependent uh, probabilities. Uh, that means that there's some kind of a condition uh, for the, the probability of the second event happening. Um, so like you pick a card, you don't put it back, and you pick a second card. Well, that first card being gone is going to affect the probability of the second card. What, how likely it is that that second card will be a king or a spade or whatever. Okay, so again, they give us some kind of arbitrary uh, probabilities. Uh, we still multiply them together because if we know how likely it is that B will happen, given that A has already happened, then it's the same as before. It's the same as the dependent, or sorry, the independent probabilities. This will happen 0 0.3, 30%, you know, of the time. This will happen 80% of the time when A has already happened. All right, and we'll look at some specific examples. Um, they're not so arbitrary after this, but we would just take 0.3, multiply it by 0.8, because we know how likely it is that, 0.8, or that B will happen once A has already happened. So whatever 0.8 times 0.3 is, Okay, now we know what, how likely it is that A will happen and how likely it will be that A and then B happens. So we know that 0.8 times the probability of B given A is going to come out to be 0.32. So we just divide by 0.8 on both sides. And we have it. So we have 0.32 divided by 0.8, 0.4. Will happen. The, the the likelihood that B will happen, given that A has already happened, must be 0.4. All right. Now we want to know how likely is it that we'll pull a diamond and then a heart. Um, I'm just thinking maybe they gave us two conditions. Yeah, two conditions. Uh, the first condition A is that we do put it back, and B is that we don't put it back. In other words, this is going to be independent. It's almost like we have two completely uh, separate decks of cards because both things, the first thing and the second thing, happen with a full deck of cards because we put the first, we put the card back that we draw in the first place. We shuffle it up, we draw again. Um, this would be dependent because the first thing affects the second thing. So how likely is it that we'll pick a diamond and then a heart? Well, first, how likely is it that we will pick a diamond? Well, there are. 13 diamonds out of the 52 cards, so it's that likely. All right. Now this, this uh, dependent probability 
this sort of this conditional probability, we just have to figure out how likely is it that I'll pick a heart, given that the first card has already been a diamond. Well, there's not any fewer hearts. We still have 13 hearts, but we have one less card total, so we have 51 cards. Okay, so there it is. That's that's what we multiply together. So this will come out to be one fourth. Uh, this is uh, this is not going to simplify. So we have 13 out of uh, 154. No, 204. What I was thinking there. So 13 out of 204 is uh, the likelihood that we'll pick a diamond and then a heart, specifically in that order. Okay. Um, now we want to pick a diamond, then a club, then another diamond. And I just realized that I did part B here when I should have done part A. This is part B. This is where we don't put the card back. But if we do put the card back, the first probability is 13 out of 52. And the second probability is also 13 out of 52 because there are 13 diamonds out of the 52 cards. We put that card back. So we have 13 hearts and still 52 cards total. So this will be uh, 1 16th because this, these will both simplify to 1 4th. So we get 1 16th, and in the other case, we get 13 out of 204. All right, we're going to pick three cards. We're going to calculate the probabilities with replacing the card and without. Okay. So this is basically, like I said, we're going to pick the first card, and then we're going to have a fresh deck for the second card. We're going to have a, another completely fresh deck for the third card. Um, we're going to pick a diamond. There are 13 diamonds out of 52 cards. We put that card back. Brand new deck for this guy. How likely is it that we'll pick a club? Well, it's the same likely that we'll, same amount likely as uh, when we pick a diamond because there are 13 clubs out of 52 cards. And then we're going to pick another diamond. While we put the cards back, we again have a fresh deck to pick a diamond from. So again, the probability is 13 out of 52. So this would be one out of 64 because each of these will simplify to one fourth. Okay, what if we don't put the cards back? We keep them. Okay, kind of like when you deal a, a hand to somebody, you don't put those cards back. You, uh, the the people who you deal them to, keep those cards. So, first, we start with a fresh deck. Thirteen out of fifty-two is the probability that we get a diamond. Then a club. What's the probability that we get a club? Given that we have already picked a diamond. Um, well, there are 13 clubs, but only 51 cards left, okay? So this is the probability of a diamond. This is the probability of a club given diamond, okay? Now we've picked the diamond and we've picked the club. So this next probability is the probability that we'll pick another diamond given that we have already picked a diamond and a club. Okay, we have already picked these two things, and we want to pick another diamond. How likely is it that that'll happen? That's pretty simple. Um, well, clearly we have one less card in the total. We only have 50 cards now. Okay, we want to pick a diamond, but we've already picked a diamond. So given that we've already picked a diamond, there are only 12 diamonds left to pick from, so it's 12 out of 50 probability that we'll get that second diamond. Um, let's try and simplify it. One fourth. Uh, this would be six out of twenty-five. Um, this one's not going to simplify, so we're going to get a uh, uh, sixty-seventy-eight out of. I'm not going to try and do that in my head. Four times fifty-one times twenty-five. 5100, you might as well test, uh, or double check 6 times 13, I don't know why we wouldn't do that, 78, so 5100, oh, something didn't simplify, oh, we could have simplified this 4 and this 6, this could have been a 3 and this a 2, okay, so anyway, this would be um, 30, 39, out of um, 20, 
5550. Yeah. So it is a 39 out of 2550 likelihood that we will pick that particular uh, combination of cards. Uh, oh, oh, I guess we could simplify this even more and cancel out a 3 from both of these. What's 39 divided by 3? That's 13. So 2550 is 850. So I'm going to simplify it even more. I could have simplified this 3 and this 51. 1 and did a bad job simplifying at the beginning. So we could have done it that way rather than having to simplify it again and again. All right. So now we get into something that would, that would really be helped out by using a probability tree. So in one scenario, something is this likely to happen. In another scenario, that same thing is a different likelihood to happen. Uh, so, how do we manage all of this? Let's, so, let's read this. Uh, I didn't type this up very well, so it should say, On a day with fair weather, the Calamari, a football team, have 76% chance of winning. On a rainy day, it's harder to win in the rain, uh, they have a 33% chance of winning. Given that there's a 25% chance of rain tomorrow, how likely is it that they'll win tomorrow's game? So, we don't know yet. Uh, if it's going to rain. If it is currently raining uh, and they're about to play, we know that it's going, they have a 33% chance of winning. Uh, so if somebody were taking bets on that, they would say, well, they're only 33% likely to win, so they'll give you a little bit better odds and they'll pay you a little bit more money if you bet on the calamari because they're not very likely to win. But we don't know yet if it's going to rain or if it isn't. So in one case, they're very likely to win. In another case, they're not likely to win. So overall, how likely are they to win um, without knowing whether it's going to rain? So first, we start with uh, the, the first part. What's the first thing that has to happen? Well, it either has to rain or it has to not rain. Right? It's going to rain or not rain. How likely is it that it'll rain? It'll is 25% likely that it will rain. So it means just 75% likely that it will not rain. Okay, given that it rains, how likely is it that they will win? Well, if it rains, they're 33% likely likely to win, which means they are 66% likely, 67% likely not to win or to lose. Okay. What if it doesn't rain? If it does not rain, they how likely are they to win? Well, they're 76% likely to win. Uh, how likely is it that they'll lose? Well, there'll be a 24% chance of losing on a clear day. Okay. Well, one of these things has to happen. Either it rains and they win, or it rains and they lose, or it doesn't rain and they win, or it doesn't rain and they lose. Those are the only possibilities in the entire universe, uh, barring some kind of, you know, in the middle of the game, the, the universe produces a black hole which sucks the, uh, the stadium into it, or something that's not very likely. So we're going to accept these as the only possibilities. Uh, rain and win, rain and lose, not rain and win, not rain and lose. All right, so all of these uh, should add up to 100%, okay? Um, well, how likely is it that it will rain and that they'll win? You know, uh, but given that 25% that chance of it raining has happened, how likely is it that that scenario will come out, uh, will play out? Well, it will be 25% likely that it will rain, okay? And then 25% of the time they'll go they'll go on to, let's say, 25% of the time they'll go on to try and 
uh, play and, and win. They'll, they'll be 32% likely to win when it rains. And it's only 25% likely that it will even rain. So it's 0.25 times 0.33 that this scenario will happen. Okay, So it's only 25% likely it'll rain, and it's 67% likely that they will lose on that, you know, in that condition. So it's 0.25 times 0.67 that it will rain and that they'll lose. Okay, so let's look at what those come out to be. 0.25 times 0.33, 0 0.0825. It's really not likely that this is going to happen. Because it's not very likely that they will rain. And if it rains, it's not very likely that they'll win. So it's very small. It's 8.25% chance. What about this other guy? 0.25. It's not very likely that it'll rain. But if, if it rains, it's pretty likely that they'll lose. Okay, so that ha that'll happen almost twice as much, right? So 0.1675, a 16% chance, uh, a s almost 17% chance that it that they'll lose on a rainy day. It will rain and that they'll lose. Okay. Um, now let's see. What if it rains? Well, it's pretty, or what if it doesn't rain? It's pretty likely not to rain, and they're pretty likely to win when it doesn't rain. This is probably like the most likely scenario overall. But um, let's see how likely that is. It's it's 0.75% chance that it will rain, and then if it does rain, it's 0.76 chance that they will win. So yeah, this is gonna be. I guess I should make room here. This is 57% likely. So it's pretty darn likely. This is 0.7 times. 0 0.7, 0 0.75 times 0 0.76. Um, but it could also not rain and they could lose, but it's not very likely that they will lose. So it'll be 0 0.75 times 0 0.24. 0 0.75 times 0 0.24. So 0 0.18. Okay. So it's more likely that it'll rain than they they'll lose that it will uh, that it won't rain and they'll lose than it is if they'll if it rains and that they will lose it's 18 percent likely that they'll uh, that what will happen tomorrow is that it will not rain and they'll lose so it's two percent more likely that that'll happen than it rains and they lose but anyway this 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 and this are all the possibilities so all of that should add up to uh, to everything, to one. Um, if I have this right, let's see, 0 0.33, 0 0.675, okay. So let's see, so 0 0.0825 plus Seven plus point one eight is one. Uh, so, like I said, that um, let's see, make sure I added all of them up right. Yeah, um, these are all the possibilities, so they should all add up to a hundred percent, which they do. Now, how likely is it that they'll win? Well, this this kind of a win on a rainy day will happen this often, and this kind of a win, the win that happens on a non-rainy day on a clear day, will happen this often. So let's just point five seven plus 0 0.0825. So they have a 65.25 chance, 65.25% chance that they'll win. Right, that takes into account that it rains or it doesn't rain, and they win. Okay, Which leaves a, uh, a not very good chance that they will actually lose. They're pretty likely to win, because it's likely that it will not rain, and when it doesn't rain, they're likely to win. Now if we switch it around, we made it more likely that it would uh, rain than not rain. Now we start to tip the scales toward them losing, because they're not very good in the rain. Um, so, but we could we won't mess around with that. We could, but we won't. Um, you can if you want. Uh, but you can see how this would relate to your uh, coin flip and tennis match situation. Either she wins the coin flip or she doesn't, and when she does win, she's this likely to win. And when she does, uh, when she loses the coin flip, 
therefore serve second, she's this likely to win. Just kind of substitute all of that for for this scenario. All right. Um, well, thanks for watching through all that. I hope it was helpful. If uh, I can do anything else for you, let